In the last 10 years, there has been an enormous rise in the shift to going digital, especially with notes and education. In fact, in the last 10 years alone, I have gone from doing everything on paper to never needing paper ever again. The shift has resulted in hundreds of products trying to become the ultimate device. I've tried my fair share. What is the ultimate device? It means that you only need this one device and you can use it for everything. I always thought that idea was a bit far-fetched until I saw the iPad Air 4. The iPad Air 4 really seemed too good to be true. Having that many desirable features of the Pro without the price point of the Pro. So is it really that good? As a student myself, I decided to figure that out for myself. After a week, I found out that this device is actually my new favorite. I love 95% of what this device has to offer and given me, and I'm pretty sure I have tons more to discover. That being said, let's start off with a couple of things I did not like. You can't open multiple tabs in the same app. I understand that a tablet is an in-between for a phone and a laptop, but the iPad lacks this incredibly useful feature that I think could really turn around how I feel about it. Personally speaking, my school uses the Canvas app, which is where it houses most of its educational stuff. And basically, sometimes I'll have multiple non-downloadable things in the app, and I would really find it convenient if I could use the split screen feature and see both. And so in this regard, I, I really like the Surface Pro because I can open multiple tabs of OneNote, which is really perfect if you want to do practice problems in one, and then have a reference for how to like do it or something in the other. Next, the Apple Pencil is lovely, but I'd really love to keep it on the product without having it being constantly charging. But if I don't want it to charge, because for example, when it's charging, it's taking battery from the iPad itself. I can't keep it on the device, which means I am very likely to lose it. And I'm really not trying to lose a $200 pencil. <laughs> also, for some reason, the tip constantly unscrews, which leads me to think sometimes like when I'm trying to use it, the device is not working and I'll be like trying to figure out what's wrong for a good minute or so until I realize just that the tip is not screwed on and I don't know why that's an issue. Next, which isn't really a problem with the product itself, but why is the Magic Keyboard so expensive? I personally cannot imagine a keyboard worth $300, but that's just me. Personally, if I needed to type an essay or something, I would connect any old keyboard, Bluetooth or not, and it does it very easily and quickly. I found this one on Amazon that came with my case and was about $35, although I was dumb and I totally thought that it would come with like a trap pad slash cursor to make it like more like a laptop, but this is a very easy fix. I have tons of mouses and mice, what am I saying, and tons of wireless mice at home so I could totally connect that um, but truth be told I've never found that necessary. I've had a couple of issues with certain things loading. For example if I play iMessage games with somebody and I keep the tab open and I'm going to something else about after three times of playing back and forth the game will often not load. Now I want to say that this is an easy fix I just have to x out all the tabs but I feel like this should not be a problem. My last main complaint is that I was trying to use shortcuts to my advantage, but I might be expecting too much here. So what I wanted to do is I wanted the option to press the tab key on the keyboard while typing when an autocorrect um, message comes up and I like that word, but I could not find a way to do this in shortcuts and I realized that shortcuts really isn't for that, but I do help like I can find a way to do this in the future because that would really, it's one of the biggest things that would personally help me. Believe it or not though, there were many things I did like in the one week I've had of using the iPad Air. First of all, this device is incredibly fast. I've been using the 2013 MacBook Air for the last four and a half plus years on an iPhone 8 plus for the past three, which could definitely be why I think this is way faster than anything I've used. Also, in the week I've had it, I don't have a ton of apps on here, so that could definitely contribute to it not being so slow. The one thing I do want to mention here is that it would have totally been cool if they upped the refresh rate. If you don't know what that is, on devices like this and the 8th generation iPad, basically every second um, your device will refresh. 60 times, but the Pro does it 120 times. And I totally would have paid more to have the Pro's features in that regard. It's just one of those things where personally, I'm very impatient and I would have totally appreciated a faster device and would have been willing to pay more. Next, the ease of screen sharing on Zoom. I work a lot with tutors and a lot of scenarios where I'd like to have my face up for people to see my face, but I'd also like to show them like the work I'm doing or find a way to very easily explain stuff. and 
it is so much easier to talk to somebody and explain something when I have the camera on and I can just very easily share my iPad screen and it's incredibly convenient to know what exactly what you're sharing uh, because I can see it on my laptop screen and I can just be writing straight on the iPad. Next, it's been really easy to use the Canvas app and transfer my notes. I touched on this a little earlier, but Canvas is the app that my school uses for organizing assignments and posting materials and organizing the course as a whole. And so literally everything that you would ever need for the course is on there. One of the best parts about this Canvas app is you can directly import slides of PDFs straight from Canvas onto OneNote or literally any other note-taking device app or something that can hold notes on your tablet. I've never I've never been able to do that on any other device I've used. Another thing you can do is you can write directly on the PDFs from the Canvas app itself. You can open the Canvas app, open up the document you want, pick the right feature and you can write on it and you can leave, you can X out the app and it'll automatically save it, everything's on there, you're good. And if you're actually done writing on it and it's for example an assignment, there's a way to submit it directly to the assignment that you'd like without wasting space and saving it on your device. Which again, very innovative because you're saving space, you don't have to delete stuff, you don't have to transfer stuff, it's all seamless. I just appreciate not having to download a ton of documents that maybe I don't really want to download myself. Maybe it's something that I only want to use for a couple minutes and I don't plan to use it after that. Literally saves so much space. My only issue for this is that you can't use this function called the what if grades. Basically you can input possible grades to see what your grade in the class would be and so far I've been unable to do this on the iPad but it works fine on the website so I, I don't know why they would like just include that function or maybe I just don't know how to use it on the tablet don't know. Next, I definitely want to touch on the battery life so far because that was one of the biggest reasons stopping me from getting this product. I've used this tablet for more than four hours straight and it has never heated up or burnt me, which has actually happened before with other devices. It actually doesn't drain the battery too much either. So I was spending about four and a half, four or four and a half hours taking notes and it drained the tablet from about 87% to 53%. And I spent another time similar sort of situation about four hours probably more on youtube and it drained the battery about the same probably a little bit less too and of course it's only been a week of me using it but i, I definitely have been using it fairly intensely i have used it most days for eight plus hours in total i should say not not you know directly in one small window next i can't forget about the screen quality it's very similar to the pro i know i keep talking about the pro but i do have to have a comparison point of something for example if you want more than what i'm describing then you would go for the pro if you want less than what i'm describing you definitely go for the eight generation air so i want a good point of comparison which is why i keep bringing up those other devices anyways screen quality Whenever I literally watch anything on this device, the quality is so clear. I've always had random issues like when I'm watching on my phone where if I turn the lights off and I try to watch something versus if the lights are on, you can't see something sometimes. I've never ever ever had this issue on the iPad and that's because the iPad actually based on the lighting of the room can fix how the screen looks. So I've literally never had an issue with something as basic as that. Next, let's talk about the certain ease of apps like Hulu. Although I certainly did not figure this out on purpose, you can actually leave Hulu open and it'll be a little tiny square in the corner while you do other things. And I'm not saying you should multitask, but this is perfect whenever I have to do busy work and I can't stand it, but sometimes that's gotta be done. And this is literally perfect for when I have to do some sort of brainless work and I just like having that background noise there. Speaking of multitasking, let's talk about the split screen function. This has been perfect for me whenever I need to quote something, I'll bring my keyboard up, I'll have my notes thing on the side and then I'll have the PDF where I unfortunately may not be able to copy and paste amongst other things and I can type it in, just type in the small little thing I need and it's so easy. I found the perfect scenario that this has helped me in and basically I had this homework assignment that I had to compare with a friend and so I wanted to be able to show my answer and also show her where exactly from the text I got it. So I split the screen and I had my answers on one and then I had the PDF of the document where I had highlighted where the answers came from and the other and it basically just stopped me from wasting tons of time going back and forth between the two apps and digging for my answers. Again, the only problem here is that if it's in the same app, you're going to be stuck in. There are devices out there that can do it. Why can't you? This is not too much to ask for. So that's this is all I ask for. This is one, one thing that is actually kind of a big deal for me. So next, the ability to screenshot so, so quickly. So I've often found that people will ask for help in any sort of school related group chat. And, and I'm the kind of person that loves to help people and loves to 
do like detailed step-by-step -step things but you can't directly write in discord or if you can't I haven't discovered it yet so what I do is I write in one note I'll show the steps and everything and then I'll take a screenshot and when you take a screenshot you can actually edit the screenshot so what I'll do is I will circle with a nice highlighter what the relevant portion is and then I can send it directly to discord what does that mean in the corner it, it gives me the option do you want to iMessage this to somebody do you want to discord it to somebody how do you want to send it to somebody do you want to save it and this and I send it directly through discord and guess what that does it gives me the option to not save it I'm not just saying not saving the edits of the ugly circle I drew it also tells me that I don't have to save the screenshot itself and this is where the efficiency and the time saving comes in and space because I don't have to go back and delete tons of junk screenshots and this might not seem like a big deal but you don't understand how much time I've gone back and deleted stuff that is just so irrelevant. Moving on to a topic that I'm not as enthusiastic about and that's sound quality. There's two speakers on here and they're fairly beautiful. Like I said I, I don't have a great comparison point. I have the first generation AirPods and I, I just don't find the air quality anything to scream about at all. I, I think it's very subpar. Same with my MacBook Air speakers. So this is definitely an upgrade. The Pro does have four speakers. Again, I've never used it, so I don't have anything to complain because I don't have that high expectation. But if you find that you're not happy with the speakers, just know that there is more out there. I want to talk very quickly about camera quality. By this time, you know, we expect every device to have an A plus camera. So this, this part may not be shocking. I want to just say that the selfie cam camera is eh, subpar. But the front facing camera is just a thousand times better than my iPhone 8 Plus itself. I'm just going to show you a couple pictures and then you guys can tell me in the comments which one you think the iPad did and which one you think my iPhone 8 Plus did. Real quick, I want to talk about everything OneNote has done for me. It's literally free and has more features than pretty much any other free note taking app. It transferred all my notes from my Surface Pro, which was really convenient from transferring devices in the middle of a quarter. You can easily remove notebooks after the quarter's over so it's not taking up space on your device. I can literally access my notes anywhere. I can access it online. There's so much more about OneNote that I love and it just truly deserves a whole video. There's too much to talk about there. I want to talk about a couple more things I really love about the iPad but I do want to save it for a what's on my iPad video so I'm just gonna go uber quick to these things that I love. So first how fast Bluetooth device connects. Okay, so if I have my keyboard and I'm trying to connect it, all I do have to do is turn the on button and it'll connect in maybe two seconds. And if it doesn't, I just have to go to settings and it forgets device in about a couple seconds, reconnects in another five seconds. Total, I wasted maximum like 11 seconds, which is insane, again, with the efficiency. Same with the Apple Pencil. If I keep it lying around, it'll disconnect after some time, which I have to do because like I said, I don't want it charging all the time. But as soon as I put it back in the spot and then pick it up, it's already reconnected. Lastly, I want to talk about the Google Calendar app. It's pretty much my best organization app and the trick to how I get so much done. The mobile app is very clear, very easy, and super fast to use. It just makes planning so easy, fun, and efficient. So there we are. How does the IR hype up to being the ultimate device then? The bottom line is that it does. It's the slightly more budget friendly version of the Pro. As a non-art student myself, I doubt I'd be able to use even a half to a fourth of what the Pro has to offer, especially considering that even in the week that I've been using it, I keep discovering five to 10 new things that the Air has to offer every day. For certain college devices, the Air will definitely be the ultimate device. And for myself it is. The only thing I actually use my laptop for now is watching lectures, but that's when I have to take notes on the iPad. I don't even do assignments on my laptop anymore because I never have to write essays myself. And even if I have short answer assignments, I'll just use my keyboard and write it on my iPad. Essentially, the Air has simplified everything for me. So if you're in the position I was a few weeks ago, wondering if you should get an 8th generation Air or an iPad 4 or the Pro, just know this. Technology continues to be on the rise, so you really can't make a bad choice here. You'll definitely utilize whatever device you got to best fit your own needs. You'll find features that work regardless of what device it exactly is. And for me, the Air was perfect. I'm able to use it for hours and hours of seamless note taking and also being able to edit my videos. If you're just looking for a note taking device, you can't go wrong with the 8th generation iPad. But if you're looking for something more artistic and innovative than all the features I just told you about the Air, I definitely recommend looking into the Pro. Or again, if you're like me, looking for an avenue of creativity, but still have your sights set on school, you can check the air out. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Have a great day everybody. Bye!